course, my little stick is not quite so little, so obviously yours is going to be smaller than this, but the concept is really the same. So it works best on a chair or a bench that doesn't have any kind of hand like arms on it, okay? And you want to perch yourself so that you're really just sitting on the edge. So as best as you can, try to maintain your balance on the edge, just putting your body weight on here, relaxing the, the leg that is going to be getting worked on, okay? Just make sure your heel is touching the ground. You don't want to lift the leg up because then that, that activates these muscles that you want to get to relax, okay? So stay relaxed, stay grounded with your foot, get your rolling pin, or in this case, the stick, and you're just going to start going all the way down up to the kneecap and back up again to where that bone is. You probably can feel that right up here, okay? The longer your leg is, the better off you're going to be, all right? Ideally, you would want to do this, you know, if you could be on the floor, um, but it's harder to start off that way, obviously. So we're going to go along, up and down. I'm not going real fast, okay? You don't need to rush it. You just take your time, and then you're going to find points that start talking to you. So what do you do? Let's say I'm feeling tight right here. I bear it down a little bit. I stay a couple inches above and below. I breathe, so don't seize up, all right? And then until it's about 30% less painful, then I can move on again and see if there's another point. And what I'm also doing is I'm turning my foot out and in so I get some of those muscles that are around the inner and outer thigh area. This is always tight for me, and um, I'm going to hang out here, okay? So we're going up and down. I need to breathe, okay, and then when it's about 30% less painful, I'm going to move on to another area, okay. So, you'll know how to guide yourself. When you're finished with the front and side of the thigh, go to the back, okay. You want to start where the sitting bones are. You should kind of feel them, you know, right at the top of the leg, and you're going to be able to pull. Okay, now, it's more difficult when you're sitting because these uh, hamstrings are, are shortened up. So our job is to try to find a place that you can be where maybe you can extend the leg out and keep the foot level with the hip, okay, so that your knee isn't, isn't bent. So this is actually a good time to go on a bed or a long couch or something and then try it this way, okay? Kind of lean back a little bit and you're going to tell right away makes a big difference. That muscle isn't going to fight back at you because it's already shortened up to hold your, your knee to make it bent. Okay? And you go back and forth until you feel that little point of tension where it's talking to you. And you just hang out there, you know, until it's about 30% reduced in pain. For me, I'm not feeling much, so I'm going to go down to the calf. Same kind of thing with the calf, okay? The back of the lower leg. We're going to go around the sides, all right? And basically, you want to do this, uh, concentrate on those areas. If you were to put it on a scale of 1 to 10 in terms of pain, 10 being ultimate, most painful, 1 being super, super easy going, um, anything that's a 5 or more, you want to really work on those areas until you get them under a 5, okay? Like every day, religiously, work on these. So I'm feeling it on the outside edge of my lower leg, especially up by the knee. There's a little insertion area here where the muscles connect. And so I'm going to hang out here. I'm tilting my foot this way, okay? And you just have to kind of work around with your leg, okay? Work around your leg. And I'll hang out here until it's 30% reduced in pain. So when I finish this leg, I've got a second leg to go to. It's a good thing I'm not an octopus. It'd be pretty busy. And then I move on to that leg, okay, when I'm all set with this one. So that's what you do with the, uh, the stick or the rolling pin. Take your time with this. The more, the more time you put into it to work out those knots in your muscles, the better off you're going to be and the less prone to injury down the road. So enjoy this one. And then uh, do your dynamic warm-up, which will be, you know, the uh, hip openers where you're lying down on the bed or the floor. Your knees up. You lift your hips up, you tuck under, try it with two legs for 15, and then uh, take a break, and then do one leg for at least 12 
Concentrate on the weaker side, so your left leg maybe for 15 repetitions, okay? Take a break and do it again on one leg, all right? And uh, that should do it. So a few more opening exercises for the dynamic warm-up, maybe the torso twists as well, where you're lying on your side. Those are great to do. And then you can get up and do those cat camels on the edge of the bed or on your on your knees, like your hands on your thighs. You can arch your back down and look up. Arch your back up and look down. Your job is going to be to move through the hips and not so much through the shoulders. Okay, so let the hips do most of the moving on that one. All right, let's get into the nitty gritty now. I'm going to show you some great techniques uh, to strengthen up the hips and get your lunging down properly. So getting up and down those stairs will just become easier and easier as time goes on. All right. All right, just to re-emphasize the technique with going up the stairs doing step ups, the job here is whether you're going up one step, it's more difficult with two, all right, you just want to make sure that your knee is aligned over your ankle, not past your shoelaces and definitely not past your toes. Take this leg, bring it behind you a little bit, okay, and then what you want to do is stay put in. You want to lift up your toe and bring your, your knee down a touch, all right? So from that standpoint, if you need to hold on, that's okay. You're going to lift up through here, and you're going to tuck the hips under at the top. Bring yourself back down, and just use your front leg to do the work. You want your front leg to pull you up and down, okay? So we're going to do a little closer view of this as well. you're bending that back knee, you're getting a fuller range of motion when you lift up to get to the step. Okay, you want to tuck your hips under at the top. That full range of motion will help those muscles get stronger in a more complete way. Okay, and that's what we're going for. So optimal function, optimal strength. So keep practicing those ones. That's definitely a good one. Okay. body nice and strong and you can work your way to the railing if you find that this is too easy. Um, ideally you want to get to about 15 of these maybe two or three times and when you feel like that's a piece of cake or you can use, you know, do something a little more difficult then you can graduate to the um, you know a lower surface like your railing or a step or something like that. Same principle applies where you want to keep your elbow more alongside the body, so you're going to line your shoulder up right over your hands. Go up on your toes or the balls of your feet. Okay, keep your tummy stable. Tuck the hips in. You're going to inhale down and exhale up. All right, and you're going to do most of the body weight on the balls of your feet and especially on the heels of your hands. And as you can see, my little partner in crime here is demonstrating as well. All right, so. You want to get nice and strong in the upper body. This is a great way to do it. The closer in that your arms are to your upper body, the more the back of the arm is working. Okay, so give that a shot. Let me know how you like it. All right, I'm real excited about this because you're showing great potential with the lunge. When you lunge, make sure Evie doesn't get in the way. Stay over here, buddy. Come right over here. Okay. You want to bring your back leg behind you. And you want to line up your back knee so it's under your hip, all right? Make sure you're on the ball of your back foot. And this front leg is going to carry the brunt of your weight, okay? So that way you're going to feel it more in the front hip and the rear end area. So basically with the lunge, and you can, you can hold on to the wall, you're going to go up and down, all right? This is like doing those step ups, except you're not moving that back leg up a little bit higher. Go ahead and get the ball. So you bring yourself down, push up through the heel on your front leg, all right? Inhale as you go down, exhale as you go up, all right? So then 
After 10 to 15, whatever you think you can handle, you're going to work your way up to that, okay? So don't feel like you have to climb, climb the mountain, so to speak, and get all 15 in and see these are tough. You're going to switch sides then. Same principle. Line up your knee right under your hip. Okay, so make sure this, this hip is going back a little bit. Bring this knee so it's right over your ankle. Inhale down. Exhale up. Hold on to the wall if you need to. Both sides, whatever. Alright, put the weight in that front leg. This is just kind of holding you steady here. Alright, so a great exercise. Really highly functional. This is huge. So work on this as best as you can, okay? Nothing should hurt. And if it does, you stop right away and let me know. Okay. All right. This is to counteract any lunch lady arm issues that are going on at the back of the arm. Now, the push-ups are going to definitely help. But if you want to isolate just a little bit more, you can do something called a triceps kickback, and my little partner is going to help show as well. For the starters, just do it where you're doing a little half squat, keeping your back nice and long. You can also put your hand on a bench or a table or a chair to support you. If you have a weight or a tube, you would use it with one arm. Start with the arm bent and the upper arm level with the upper body, okay? And all you're doing is you're extending back. That's it. Now I'm going to tell you something. Take a look at the wrist. I'm keeping it nice and even. What I'm not doing is bending the wrist in any way. That's a temptation to do to make you think you're doing more work than you actually are, but it can actually be stressful to the wrist, so don't do that, okay? So your goal here is to work up to 10 to 15 on a side, maybe do two times, you know, do those two times. Make sure you switch, you know, to the other side and get yourself situated, nice long back. Don't let your back get lumpy. And watch out for little little devils who in brown who might come, come around and help you with your workout. <laughs> okay, very good. I want you to use, remember how we would do this on the bed laying down here, stay put. What you're going to do with this exercise is the same concept as when you're lying down and I have my hand right by your hip, you know, and you're trying to press the knee into it. No need to press with this one. All you want to do is get your feet close to the wall. You can support yourself with your hands. And do your best now. Put your body weight on one leg. Lift that other leg as high as you can. Okay, try to get it so that right now we're 90 degrees from the hip. You want to get it so you're up higher. Okay, so that's your goal. Up higher. Go about 10 to 15 on the side. Put your body weight on the other leg, and then get yourself up higher. You don't have to go all the way back down again. As a matter of fact, I think I would like you not to do that, okay? So this is going to really help strengthen the area around the hip and low back primarily, okay? Let me know how this works for you, and uh, we can always modify from there, okay? Thank you.